Hello, my name is Simon Scher. Welcome to my tutorial on how to use the heavy bag for both kicking and punching and combinations. First thing I want to talk about is gloves versus non-gloves. In my personal opinion, when you're first starting out, it's best to not use anything, just your hands. And don't hit too hard. The first thing you want to do is learn how to punch correctly. That means keeping your wrist straight from the second and third metacarpal to the radial and the ulna bone. So you want a straight fist, like I talk about in my Taekwondo punching tutorial. Once you've built this up slowly and then gone faster and harder and harder and built up the ability to punch without bending your wrists and without uh, you know, changing the angle of your hand, then it's a cool idea to put on gloves so that you can hit a lot faster and harder without having to worry about maintaining that alignment. But you still need to maintain that alignment. The heavy bag can serve a lot of purposes. One of the best is timing. When you hit it, it moves a little bit. Not so much that it won't come back, but when you hit it, it'll move too far away from you to hit it again right away unless you adjust yourself. So the first thing you want to work on once you get used to hitting the bag is timing. You can do this with punches or kicks. You hit it, and then you have to wait till it's in the exact right range before you throw the punch again. If you punch too soon, then you're not going to be able to extend your strike fully. If you strike too late, you're going to miss your target completely. You should lean forward and break your center to punch the bag, or lean backwards and break your center. You want to keep your body straight and aligned, just like I talk about in my other kicking and punching tutorials. When you punch, you want to make sure it's in range, not you leaning forward to try to get it, or leaning backwards to try to put yourself in range. When you kick, the same thing. You don't want to lean into the kick or else you'll fall forward. You don't want to lean backwards or else you'll fall over backwards. Maintain your center line and wait for the bag to be in the right spot, just like you wait for your opponent to be the right distance before you strike. Another topic that's similar, but slightly different, is distance. So timing and distance. They go hand in hand, but they are separate concepts. So if the bag is too far away, you could shift or step forward to strike it. If it's too close, you could shift or step backwards. So distance with the heavy bag means moving with the bag so that you can continually hit it without being too far or too close. So you're adjusting your timing and your distance to coincide with the swing of the bag. A common mistake that people make when using the heavy bag is pushing versus striking. It's very tempting to push the bag because then you get more of a swing, but that's not going to make you a better striker or a better fighter. What you want to do is you want to strike hard and pull back fast. So when you punch the bag, you don't want to hit it and push. All the power should come at the moment of impact. Now you can use a push to generate some swing so that you can work on the timing and distance of your strike. So the push can be a useful tool but it should not be the purpose of striking the heavy bag. So you don't push, push, push. You can push, punch, 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 push, punch, 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 and use your punches to stop the swing of the bag. A great way to get your legs and hips involved without having to worry about stepping so much and the shifting is just working a basic lead hand, back hand, lead hand, or jab, cross, jab. So you want to make a modified front set with your back heel up, both legs bent, your body erect, and you throw front, back, front, jab, cross, jab. Make sure you're using your hips, make sure everything's aligned, make sure you're not leaning, and just see how fast you can throw those three techniques and hit the heavy bag. And again, you're not trying to push it. You know you're hitting the bag correctly if it snaps a little bit and the bag bends inward or arcs. But if the whole bag swings, you're doing more of a push than a strike. So be careful of that. But work your jab, cross, jab on both legs. Now, even if you're not pushing, the bag will move. After jab, cross, jab, it will be too far away to throw uh, another jab, cross, jab right away. But if you want to work your speed sequences, you can get, mix your kicks into it. Because if you've watched my sparring tutorials, I talked about the three circles, circle one, circle two, and circle three. Using the heavy bag is a great way to determine which circle you're in and to get used to which strikes you can throw in each circle and transitioning between the circles. So go back and watch my sparring tutorials, particularly my blocking tutorials, Taekwondo blocking tutorial. So if you're close enough to do jab, cross, jab, you're not close enough to kick until the bag moves back. So you throw your jab, cross, jab. Then you throw a lead leg side kick. And as it comes back from that, jab, cross, jab, lead leg side kick. It's a great repetitive sequence to really get your cardio moving, work your kicks and your punches and your distance and your timing. Jab, cross, jab, lead leg side kick. Footwork is very important. I have two tutorials already out on developing footwork. And in those, I introduce you to the V drill, which is uh, basically a V on the floor at which you stand on the, at the base of, and you step around it to help condition you to move diagonally and non-linearly around your target. Now, there's a great one of these that just uses the hands. It's a cross-hook-jab combination. So uh, if you've got, uh, I would recommend going back and watching my footwork tutorial. 
And then working on the step out, shift in, round in, round out. Step away, step away, step away, step in. Step in, shift, swivel in, round out, back, back, step away, step in. Then adding the cross hook jab. Step out and cross, shift in hook, round out jab. Once you've got the footwork down and you've got the hands down, then you can pick up speed and do it faster. Then you can try to finish the whole sequence while the bag is at the far end of its swing. This is a great way to really work your hands and get your hips engaged. A lot of people, when they punch in the heavy bag, they go all arms and shoulders, and they forget about their legs and hips. That's where the power comes from, the legs and the hips. So make sure you utilize your legs and your hips, not just your arms and shoulders, when you're punching the heavy bag. Another great combination I like to use when I'm working with the heavy bag is a lead leg hook kick round kick combination. Now the biggest obstacle to using a hook kick round kick combination in sparring is if you strike with a hook kick or you're in range for it, your opponent will be in the way for the round kick. They're already have to go around their arms. So the bag simulates your opponent's blocks and body. So you throw that lead leg hook kick, and then you have to come around the bag to the side to throw the round kick. It teaches you to re-chamber your hook kick, and then to pull through so you can throw that round kick. And the first couple a dozen times you do this, you'll probably fall over or bonk your foot on the pad while coming around for the round kick or the turning kick. Same thing. So lead leg hook kick round kick makes you come around the bag. And don't get frustrated if you hit the bag and fall over. Just adjust yourself. Pull your knee back a little bit further. And then you can get around for that round kick. And uh, it's a really effective uh, sparring maneuver. A great use for the heavy bag is just practicing striking something and absorbing the rebound force, especially combination kicks. A lead leg round kick, for example, can create a significant amount of power, but it can be kind of hard to recover from if you hit an obstacle. So throwing just a lead leg round kick is a great drill on the heavy bag to teach you to absorb that into your core and standing leg. Once you've got that, you can throw multiple level lead leg round kicks, still putting some power into it. You can do low, high, high, low. Then you can throw even more combinations, low, high, high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, high, and really have fun with it. Lead leg side kick. Throwing quick lead leg side kicks is a great skill, but your partner never stands still. Your opponent never stands still when you throw lead leg side kicks. They move backwards, they move forwards. So it's important to be able to throw really quick from the ground lead leg side kicks while adjusting your distance. And the heavy bag is a great tool to practice this. You throw your lead leg side kick, the pad moves back. So before the pad swings back towards you, try throwing a sliding lead leg side kick. Then after it's too close, try throwing a slide backwards or a fading lead leg side kick and continue to throw your lead leg side kick over and over again as quickly as you can and adjusting your distance to where the pad is right after you kick it, when you're getting ready to kick it again. A lot of people don't use their heavy bag because they're not 100% sure what to do with it. My goal in this tutorial was to show you some basic drills and techniques to make really good use of your heavy bag. I highly recommend that you practice these and try to utilize them in your practice and your sparring. Thank you so much for watching my heavy bag tutorial. Please don't forget to share, comment, like, and subscribe. And check out the other videos on my YouTube channel. I have videos that cover tons of material that I like to think is all super useful. Thanks so much for watching. Have an awesome day.